Geekom's IT12 promises to do something different. It, um, uh, can we start again? Geekom's IT12 joins the ranks of mini PCs to provide you with another 4x4 inch option with a 3 year warranty. That's pretty good, right? Right? More after this message. EaseUS To Do Backup Home is an award winning backup solution to keep your data safe. Backup, clone, upgrade, or transfer your system easily and protect it from ransomware. To Do Backup Home even supports backing up to the cloud. Trial it for free with a link in the video description. If you haven't heard already, Intel exited the mini PC business and ASUS took over the reins with different products. But if you were looking for an Intel NUC clone substitute, Geekom's IT series is the closest I've seen. The exterior design is very similar. Plastic box, metal frame, same size, just different color. The ports are near identical too, except this one includes an SD card reader, which is always nice to have. Inside the box is where the main difference lies. NUC Pro units use Intel's P-series processors, while this one uses the H. The i5-12450H to be exact. Geekom sells the i5 in one configuration, 16GB of RAM and a 512GB SSD for $409 US dollars after the coupon linked in the video description. And you can use it either on their website or Amazon. It's also available in the UK and down under with coupons. The IT12 comes with a biggish power supply, mounting screws, monitor mount, thank you card, manual and HDMI cord. I did mention the similar ports and here they are. Two USB 3 10 gigabit with one providing extra power for charging. There's an audio jack and power button. The rear has two USB 4 ports which used to be known as Thunderbolt 4, Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, another USB 3 10 gigabit, USB 2, dual HDMI 2.0 and a 19 volt barrel jack connector. Oh, and Intel's AX211 chip handles Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth. Opening this mini it is just like an Intel NUC. Four screws on the bottom metal plate and lift it up while watching out for the ribbon cable. You can have up to three storage drives in the IT12. Included is a Kingston Gen 4 NVMe drive and there's room for a 2242 SATA and 2.5 inch SATA drive. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 is included. The M.2 Wi-Fi card is removable. This mini comes with Windows 11 Pro and doesn't have the option to skip logging in to a Microsoft account. But that usually means the OS hasn't been tampered with and this Windows installation came up clean after a scan. Anyway, to skip having to log in, don't connect to the internet, press Shift plus F10 at the same time, click into the command window and type OOBE forward slash bypass NRO and press enter. After the mini restarts, go through the setup process and choose I don't have internet and continue on. Or if you just want to run Linux instead, Ubuntu worked fine when I booted it off a USB. Okay, jumping into the benchmarks. This one has mid-range single core performance and matches other 12450H minis. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for multi-core. There's a drop of almost 14% against a similar mini when all cores are stressed for 10 minutes. And that extends to video encoding where the margin widens to 17%. The Kingston Gen 4 storage drive actually has speeds much closer to a Gen 3. Just to make sure though, Hardware Info does report the included M.2 slot as a Gen 4. But yeah, this Kingston is just not a fast Gen 4 drive. So when it comes to integrated graphics, the IT12 matches the other 12450H minis in both DX11 and DX12. The graphs show the 12th gen i5 isn't exactly a powerhouse in the graphics department, but it can play some games if you temper your expectations. Take the recently released Tomb Raider Remastered as an example. Now sure, this game could run on a potato, but here it is running at 4K 60fps without breaking a sweat, is what I'd like to say. But no, it can drop into the high 40s in some areas, which is definitely noticeable. Oh, and since the CPU isn't being stressed at all, the mini PC is fairly quiet. A bunch of esports titles will run fine at 1080p, like Valorant. And League of Legends 2.
Counter-Strike 2 has some random stutters and can drop to the 40 FPS mark, which isn't a great experience. And Dota 2 runs decently. And when you start to try and play modern AAA games, you'll definitely run into problems. But if you've got a Thunderbolt external eGPU enclosure, you can use the USB 4 port to play games at much better frame rates. Of course, this depends on the graphics card and USB 4 bandwidth limitations. Here I'm using an RTX 3070 graphics card in a Razer Core X eGPU. V, been a while. Spin it, what you need. Emulation-wise, I wanted to try something different. Can the i5-12450H emulate PS2, GameCube, and Wii games at 4K using the integrated graphics? The answer is no. No, it can't. But 1440p was okay with Tekken Tag on PS2. Mario Kart Wii was much too slow at 4K and 1440p. Had to drop it to 1080p to get full speed. I've tested 4K video editing on previous i5 12450H minis and my projects are handled well enough that I could edit on it if I had no other option. It's pretty responsive scrubbing across the timeline thanks to Intel's quick sync feature. Just don't expect video export times to be quick. In the BIOS, you can choose your fan mode. I tested normal and performance, and there was no difference in max CPU temp or results. And that's about it, really. Most of the settings are hidden. Idle power draw is a bit higher on this one compared to the other i5s I tested, but the maximum is a bit less, which makes sense when you take into account the lower multi-core performance. It's just not boosting as high. And the reason it's not doing that is thermal throttling kicking in as the max CPU temp hits as high as 98C. Fan noise is reasonable on the i12, it's not great, it's not bad. About average. The included NVMe drive doesn't have more than a drive temperature sensor, but it seemed to hold up fine during benchmarking. Seems the thermal pad plus metal plate helps to keep its temps down. Alright, so let's summarize. The Geekom IT12 comes with a 3 year warranty, which is a big plus, and the company has been around for 20 years, so they're likely to stick around a bit longer. This is one of the few minis that comes with a full size SD card slot. Very useful for photo and video editing. Two USB 4 ports are included just like on an Intel NUC 12 Pro. What I don't like is the lack of BIOS options. Cooling isn't the best, with the CPU hitting almost 100C under a full core load, and the multi-core performance suffers as a result. So there we have it. The Geekom IT12 is the closest mini to an Intel NUC I've seen, and can be found linked in the video description. If you're looking for something newer or more powerful, then check out my review of the IT13, which you can watch right here. Cheers!